Hello, welcome pen friends. I'm back with another ink profile. In fact, we're just getting started here with Ink Flight 28, which came in for May of 2019. <clears throat> I'm getting a late start on the profiles because I just returned from a trip at the time of this filming. Just got back from Vermont. So I have already profiled the bottom two, olive, olivine and aquamarine. So we'll be doing these five and we'll start right in with 4001 turquoise. It's the Pelican Edelstein turquoise and it's nice and bright. It's really beautiful. I've really enjoyed working with this one. I've got it here on a little single panel too. We've got a little bit of a variety of lighting today so let's dive right in and see how how it comes out here. I'm gonna put it in the water test. <clears throat> always like to do that to get an idea of how uh, water resistant or not the ink is. <clears throat> there we go. All right. And we'll just jump right in while that's happening into the Rhodia Gold Book <clears throat> where I did a quick layout. I haven't actually done too much in here yet, but I have gotten today's color put down. And um, I was going to mention while I was at this point that I'm almost done with this book. There's just a few more pages. And, and as we finish, I'm going to, as a little retirement for this book, I'm going to go ahead and do a video, kind of a quick flip through and maybe talk about, you know, how it evolved. And in the meantime, I have to decide between whether I'm going to go into the Bond Travel Gear, which has the 68 GSM Tamoy River paper, or whether I'm going to continue with the Rhodia Gold Book, which I do have one. I, um, I'm very torn because I love this book. It's got a lot of um, uh, really good, uh, strong qualities about the paper, but at the same time, it's not white. It's kind of an ivory, and it's, it's given us a few problems. So any thoughts on that would be appreciated as we go along. I've got a little while to decide, but as you can tell, really not very long at all, just a few more pages. So right into Pelican Turquoise here. I've got it in the broad nib up to this point, and then I jumped into the Lamy Fine Nib. Um, I found this ink to be very bright and cheerful. It's one of the ink groups that I happen to really like a lot. And this is just a good basic um, turquoise, really. I actually thought it was going to compare better to Diamine Aqua Lagoon than it did, so I got a few surprises. But my first impressions are that it's just super nice. Um, and it, it worked out really well in one of my notebooks that's my favorite notebook, which is my Cafe Note, the B6 Slim. So I'll show you that today, even though I don't normally show that anymore. Um, I found that this ink is available a lot of places, but I jotted down Anderson pens because you could get a three mil sample for $1.25. That's a good deal. And then you could get the large, um, in fact, I kept thinking that might be a mistake, but that's what it said on their website, uh, 62 mil bottle for $13.80. I'm going to keep looking into that because that just seemed, wow, that's awesome. Okay, so in terms of notebooks, I've got quite a few to show you today. Um, we filled this one up, and I do have a replacement, but I was thinking, uh, thanks to pen friend Sue, but I was thinking before that happened about trying a different notebook. So I went into this one. Uh, it's a CD notebook, um, Apica. Well, that didn't really work out for me too well. I tore this page out, and I don't very often do that out of notebooks, but I didn't like it because um, it bled through with the painting, which is okay, that happens, but it was also bleeding through uh, down here where I wrote with the, uh, the broad nib, and I know that it wasn't doing that on other papers, so I decided to, that it wasn't fair to this notebook to, to do that, and I just jumped into this one. This is an interesting little notebook. This was from a pen friend, a gift, and she got it at days ago. Um, that, uh, thank you, Banu. This was a long time ago. So I know that this is an affordable notebook. And I was a little bit astonished because it didn't bleed through on this one. So I thought this might be a nice, fun one to explore. And then we'd have a variety of papers. But as you can see, that was a really nice showcase of the ink. And here we are in the broad nib and the fine nib. 
and it just looked good and it, it got a chance to really kind of show the what happens with the um, painting it on or edging. And I got quite a bit of edging and highlights on the cafe note. So I'll, remind me to show you that. Dear, I'm afraid this is going to be long because I, I seem to be interested in all these little notebooks. And this is our standard uh, CVS caliber notebook, the 4x6. And I use this paper a lot, so I wanted to see how it did on there. Now, it did flatten out that ink a little bit, and you don't get quite as much of the highlighting when you paint. And you definitely don't get, you get a little shading, but not a lot of highlighting in your letters either. And, it, and when it dropped down into the fine nib with this notebook, it kind of washed out a little, but not too much. I still prefer it in the broad nib. Uh, didn't go through either. So, and this is another super economical. I would put these two notebooks, this little uh, Moriman, Moriman, I'm not sure if I'm saying that right, um, but they, this is available at Days of Co. and this is available at CVS. They're just, you know, they're under $2 notebooks, so those are nice. Okay, then um, I still like to test out Loistrum 1917 paper because I'm a bullet journalist, and that is a daily thing for me. So I can refer back to these uh, to find out how these did. And it did really well in here. Um, let, let's flip back though, I can't remember. It may be tried to bleed through when the painting, painted part, but in my bullet journal, I would use it in a nib anyway. So this was the broad nib, and this was the fine nib, and I was happy with both of them. I can tell, and you can too, it's going to be much brighter in a... A wider nib like that so that's good but a lot of times a fine nib is the way to go okay so this was the notebook I liked how Pelican um, 4001 turquoise did the best in um, this is the cafe note by uh, Nanami paper company um, it's almost gone and they're not they wrote me that they're not going to be doing this seven millimeter line anymore but they do have one with a uh, graph, and I may have to just adjust my writing to fit in the graph. I'm considering that right now. Anyway, I just loved how the writing looked in this notebook, and I'm hoping I can show you. You get quite a bit of highlighting around the edges of the letters, and um, as, as, the, as it faded, because the serendipity does that, it's a, a fountain pen nib and feed, but it just has the little reservoir inside. So as it fades, you don't get quite as much um, drastic, uh, you know, the beauty like you do in the beginning. So, cause this is the same uh, pen and everything, but see over here, you're getting more of just the flat color like we got on the other pages. I could have dipped again, but I, I really didn't want to have the pen full of ink if I was going to move on to the next, um, ink color. So, and I was just making notes about my after action report on how my fasting went and everything like that, but I thought it was pretty. Now let's see. How did that work? Uh, oh, I was probably journaling on the other side. I hate to get into that. Sorry about that, but I was, you know, <laughs> I was having some journaling going on in that. Okay, so this is the last notebook. This is the Live Notes by Pen Gallery. Let's see. And it's Tomoy River Paper 68 GSM. Uh, it only bled through where it was painted on, and it does that occasionally, not with every ink. But I did love how that looked. It does look like I may have put that on a little heavy, so maybe if one was careful with the paintbrush or used a finer, like a really thin paintbrush, which I'm, I'm actually in need of a paintbrush right now, then it might not do that. But I liked how it looked. Uh, I did. It was time for a redip, and there I went. <laughs> but this was the broad nib and this was the Lamy fine nib. So, <clears throat> nice. Okay, so I've stuck to just four pa paper samples for us. And uh, before I went on vacation, I put all of them on this Tamoy River uh, 52 GSM. So it's right there in the middle. And I thought that looked really nice. But I started over so that we could have them all on one paper. So here we go. And also I wanted to show you both the broad nib and the fine nib. 
And um, really, I think this paper is one of the better papers. The lighter weight uh, Tamoy River paper really showcases this Pelican ink. I liked it. I, I thought that for letter writing, I'd be spot on. And for journal writing in that cafe note, it would be just perfect. So I really, really thought it looked nice. Now I guess I've got it. Yeah, it only bled through where it's painted on. The rest was nice and, you know, just a little bit of shadowing. <clears throat> Apparently I was happy with it because I wrote yes out in the corner. <laughs> okay, so on Claire Fontaine 90 gram French ruled. Now this surprised me. I liked it a lot on here. And sometimes I find that this paper isn't my favorite, but I really liked how it looked. I mean, it, it's nice uh, wet ink, or it wouldn't do this on the Claire Fontaine. I, I did like it very much, especially in the broad nib. But then you can kind of see that it holds up pretty well in the fine nib too, and that's a dry, that's a fairly dry nib. <clears throat> okay, so then, let's see, I've got uh, Rhodia Dot Pad 80 GSM, and it's not as drastic maybe, and wow, it's looking too dark there. All of a sudden, <laughs> okay, let me hold it like that. Huh, it did come across dark though, it just was looked darker. Yeah, it just looks darker than the other one, so. And we're getting camera and lighting issues, but here it is in the broad nib. <clears throat> I started printing and I kept printing. And then there it is in the Lamy Fine nib. Just very, very good. Didn't bleed through at all. I don't know if I showed you that. On the Claire Fontaine, of course, it didn't go through. I stopped using the Hamlin optic paper as part of the reviews because it behaves so much like Claire Fontaine. And I'm actually using the Hamlin for letter writing. But I did go ahead and decide to keep doing the copy paper. For those of you who are using paper that you don't have any control over in an office, this is Georgia Pacific 20 pound copy paper, very inexpensive, typical, I guess, maybe even cheaper than what you get. Um, it did feather quite a bit in the broad nib, um, but it's still readable. And then it did just fine, I thought, with the Lamy fine nib. I would definitely recommend the finer nib or the extra fine nib for this paper. Um, and it <laughs> surprisingly, it only went through a little bit there. And maybe tries to bleed through here and there, but not, nothing significant to talk about. Okay, so let's stop in on our bath test and then... Okay, so I can still see the letters, but it's fading pretty fast. So I'm not sure on that. that that's probably going to be a typical fountain pen ink. I did do a panel just specifically for us for today because I had three other blue panels and none of them were actually geared toward this bright, bright turquoise. And I kind of messed it up just a little bit because I put one of my favorite inks on here, which is uh, the Diamine Aqua Lagoon. I just had to see how it looked because that's my favorite ink. Well, it's probably my very favorite ink. But then I thought, is it gonna, is Petal, Pelican Edelstein uh, turquoise, is that gonna knock out Aqua Lagoon? Um, but then I realized they're kind of distinct. They're a little different. But anyway, here we are. This is today's ink right in the middle. And there, I do have quite a few samples that kind of do compare well. Um, and then I was, at the last minute, I realized that Tasha Sora, which I thought I'd already reviewed, but I'm really going to have to do a, a day where I get organized because it doesn't appear that I've <laughs> done that review and I thought I had, but we'll see. Maybe I didn't tag it right and it didn't come up. Uh, that one is very similar. It's, it's a little lighter, but that surprised me. And then, so these two here, Diamine Aqua Lagoon and Robert Oster Torquey, they veer off in a little bit of a different direction, but the rest of them are right in that ballpark. Lamy Turquoise is just beautiful and sort of reminded me of, of Pelican Turquoise. And then the Caran Dash Hypnotic Turquoise. I've always thought this ink was beautiful, but I, I just wouldn't pay the price for a bottle so far in my pen, um, in my three years in, back in fountain pens. I just wouldn't pay the price, uh, found it too expensive because I like so many inks. And then this Diatramentus Adular Blue might be a little darker and it starts to go 
in another direction, but it's beautiful. And if you like diatrementous inks, there's one for you. And then this Ackerman um, number 11, Treves Turquoise, and that, I'm not sure whether I'm pronouncing that right. That was very reminiscent and perhaps just a little bit lighter. Same with Platinum Mixable Aqua Blue was a little lighter. I just, there's a lot of variety here, and this isn't all the turquoises. This is just the ones I had that I wanted to see on the panel that are maybe close to it, or I wanted to do a comparison for us. So that was really interesting. Um, I'm still extremely happy with Diamine Aqua Lagoon, but it's funny how it, as I'm looking at it with the rest of these turquoises, I'm not so sure that I should be calling it turquoise in my mind even. But it, it definitely um, hits all the boxes for me because this one shades quite a bit more. So I like that a lot. Okay, all right. So now let me show you the visual journal. Uh, this turned out to be very um, movable. And it, so what I was working on didn't stay in place. It, it looked like a picture and then it didn't look like a picture because the longer it sat to dry with the water, it just went away. But I still think it's beautiful and it gives us quite a range. Um, and it's nice that Krishna Winilum is up above because that's a darker blue and it gives you a chance to compare the two uh, on this white paper. It just completely kind of washed out here, but you still get those highlights. In fact, you get quite a bit of red highlighting coming out on this one and some on on the edges here so I've got to get back in practice with this but this is something I really enjoyed doing so as far as what's next <laughs> um, really hoping to focus and keep right on going and the next one will be the 4001 brilliant brown and this may prove to be different than the other browns that I have uh, reviewed so far or profiled and hopefully we'll enjoy that and then another thing that I'm looking at is, you know, I'm working on ways that I can still uh, do some of these others that I wanted to do. So this is the Birmingham April pen parcel. And I was extremely interested in Golden Gazette, which is unusual for me to be interested in a, a color of that brightness and that um, tone. It's a different, it's almost like yellow or mustard or something like that. And then, of course, I just showed you the, the May Birmingham pen parcel. And I think the one that stood out the most to me was Black Mold. And then I had other people mention Summer Jade. That was one of them. And I also have a pen friend who's looking for a blue black. And, but we will be getting very soon to the Tanzanite in the Pelican. And I think that brand probably interests her quite a bit. So we'll, we'll be getting there soon. So I'll see you back here with Pelican Edelstein Brilliant Brown very soon. And thank you very much for joining me. And let me know in the comments, um, you know, what you thought of turquoise. It's a beautiful color, isn't it? And it kind of makes me think of summer and swimming pools and brightness and the sky and everything. It's, it's a happy color. So I would love to hear what you think about it. Thank you and see you later.